so back in the 90s, um, Dan Quayle debated uh, Lloyd Benson in the vice presidential debate. Dan Quayle was uh, Bush's pick for vice president, and uh, Benson was uh, Dukakis's pick. And Benson won the debate, even though I supported Quayle and Trump. And I think Quayle was a good conservative, but he was a lousy debater and lousy campaigner. That's why uh, Lloyd Benson ended his career. And the way he did it, uh, it was actually the opposite of what's happening now, where we're debating if people are too old to be president. Then it was was Dan Quayle too young. And he was actually a year older than uh, J.D. Vance, but he wasn't as uh, sharp as J.D. Um, so Lloyd Benson, an older guy, I think he was like in his late seventies, uh, was debating him. And the question to Dan Quayle was, are you too young? And Dan Quayle said, well, I have as much experience as Jack Kennedy in the Congress when he became president. And Lloyd Benson famously, uh, replied, I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. You are no Jack Kennedy. Until recently, I replied to Joe Biden when Joe Biden called us Trump supporters garbage. I said, I knew garbage. Garbage was a friend of mine. Mr. President, Trump supporters are not garbage. Your presidency is garbage. Your corruption is garbage. And this is why we're gonna throw you in the trash, your whole administration on garbage day next Tuesday, November 5th. And so I just wanted to uh, kind of go into a few more details on why I made that video. Years ago, when I came to Florida, um, I was kind of inspired my, by my Italian grandfather who came from Italy with nothing. He used to say, I come over here as a teenager with nothing. They put a paintbrush in my hand and I paint 14 hours a day to make a living. Today, the, the immigrants come over and they put a welfare check in their hand and then they never work. <laughs> That's what he used to say. <laughs> um, so I was inspired. The, you know, I was a part-time building superintendent. I don't know if you know about that. But, uh, you know, I got out of the Navy. My wife just had the her, her, or my wife and I we just had our fourth child and um the only way we could afford to live like in a decent neighborhood was to be a uh, part-time building superintendent just kind of maintain the building and they gave us a basement apartment but it was a tiny apartment and after the fourth kid we outgrew it in the prices in New Jersey and the taxes you know it's a democrat run state so it's horrible to live uh even though I love the people and they're you know I just I, I love New Jersey I just couldn't afford to live there so we moved to Florida and it was, it was risky. You know, I was looking long-term like my grandfather went down there with nothing, like literally had less than a thousand dollars to our name, no credit. And what we could fit in the minivan, we fit everything else. We sold in a garage sale. What was left over, we gave to the church. And, um, long story short, I said, you know, I'm just going to take the first job I could get. So the first job, uh, I met a friend down here and he got me in waiting tables. I never waited tables before. Uh, but it was buffet, so it wasn't a lot of money. It's Golden Corral down here in Florida. I did that at night, uh, but I knew I needed more, and I had a CDL. You know, I could drive a, you know, semi or box truck, whatever. And um, the garbage company was hired in Orlando, waste management, and I figured I'd drive a garbage truck. But because I didn't switch from New Jersey to Florida, they. Uh, Told me I gotta start at the bottom until I get the license switch, so I gotta be a gunslinger. Basically hang on the back and throw the garbage. Not like these push button garbage trucks today where an arm lifts up the garbage. Now you I held on to the back, had to run in, throw the garbage in. And uh pretty interesting job. Like we would go in these subdivisions with like 500 homes, and the driver would just slowly go back, you know, like swerve you like an S. And I would just literally run behind it. I got in like the best shape of my life. <laughs> I was ripped. We came in the summer, I think, I think like May. And I did that that whole summer until I got with a consolidated freight trucking in I think September. So I did the whole summer, man. I was I was ripped. I felt good. Uh, Cause you're running, you're lifting garbage. It's not, it's, it's the, you know, I've thrown ice. 
I've slung milk. I was a milkman. I was an ice delivery guy. I would say garbage man is the hardest job physically. And you don't you don't hear the term garbage woman. <laughs> Maybe now with the arms, there's some women that do it. It's garbage men. You know, we had hundreds of garbage men. I, I, there was not one woman working there. And uh, I mean, you would literally pick up garbage, you know, and you know, throw it in. You, you grab it, throw it, and the driver would help you if there was more than three cans. But if there was three cans or less, they expected you to be quick enough. You could. You know, he never stopped moving, you know, because we didn't get paid by the hour. We got paid by the house. So it was all about how many, how many houses you could pick up, and if and if another route was behind, we go join them and you know run some more. And. Um, you know, all day long, like every, like every day, you're getting fire ants falling on your head. I used to have these big, uh, they call them palmetto bugs, but they look like roaches. Would crawl up my neck, I'd have to grab them and throw them off. You'd have freaking maggots all the time. You know, you're pulling maggots off of your forearms. It was, it was a nasty, brutal job. Uh, but we used to, and it stunk. The garbage truck stunk. And then when at the end of the day, you brought it to the dump, it was the most putrid smell. And I remember telling the first day, I was telling my driver, because I was a helper, I was telling the driver, man, this is making me want to vomit, bro. I'm, I'm serious. I think this smell is going to make me vomit. He's like, bro, it's the smell of money. <laughs> they used to say it's the smell of money. I was like, no, dude, this is horrible. And uh, But I did that because, you know, blue collar guys do what we got to do. You know, Joe Biden would know nothing about that. He's been in government his whole life. Kamala Harris been in government her whole life. They know nothing about us. They're so out of touch. You know, when I see these gay dudes for Harris, I laugh at these 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 rich guys trying, you know, or, or white dudes for Harris rather. <laughs> uh, I laugh at them because they are so out of touch. They they have they can they lost a blue collar vote because they they have no idea what we go through to make a living. I used to do that. I used to start at five in the morning. Used to finish up around three, and I would be so exhausted. I mean, it was physically draining. And I would fall asleep on my drive from the route to the dump. Uh, and then I have to get out, and you know, we dump the garbage. And then I would fall asleep on my way back to the shop. And they, you know, they provided us uniforms, and there were showers, and there were lockers, and and they they would do the, you know, most jobs I have, I have uniforms. When I was a milkman, I had a uniform. You know, when I worked you know, delivering whatever, consolidated freight when it was truck driver, they gave us uniforms. But usually bring the uniform. They all have uniform services where they would wash them for you, but I always brought them home. The garbage company, I never brought it home because there was all kinds of, I mean, literally we would go down some of these rural roads in Florida and people would have horse and there's been times where the bag broke and horsemen went all over me and it's the middle of the route, you know, you can't stop. So you just take your shirt off and, you know, be running like with no shirt on, you know, because... You had no choice. I remember a supervisor came out and was like, oh, you got to put your shirt. I'm like, bro, I ain't wearing this shirt. It's full of horse manure. So he went back to the shop and got me another one. Uh, it's a brutal job. So I would do that. And then I would go back to the shop. I would take a shower, uh, put my old uniform in the laundry there, let them do it. And then I would put on my Golden Corral uh, server uniform. <laughs> and... Uh, I remember uh, thinking, man, if these people knew what I was touching all day and I'm serving them food and, you know, one guy shook my hand. He's like, man, you got some rough hands for a waiter. And I said, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I, that's mad. I didn't tell him I was a garbage man, but my hands were like rough. They were callous and they were like sandpaper. <laughs> but um, so I, I know garbage, you know, and um, and I've been in tune with politics and I've never heard in my life a party insult voters before. You know, from the beginning, you, know, you look at the early, you know, debates from our founding fathers. They would say some pretty nasty, mean stuff that today would be considered unacceptable to each other. And today, you know, you hear Trump and Kamala call each other names. And, you know, this is normal. But what's not normal, what's garbage is politicians calling the voters like number one that's wrong number two like don't you want to try and get our votes don't you want to convince us with ideas you know uh, obama calling us christians bitters and racist uh hillary calling us deplorables and now you know harris and walsh calling us nazis 
and then Biden calling us garbage. You never hear Trump calling the supporters of Kamala Harris names. You call hear him calling her names. It's a fight, you know, it's a political fight. It's rhetoric, you know. Uh, but for them to call us garbage is, is that's garbage, you know, and it's stupid and, and he's going to lose. It's going to backfire on him. It's totally going to backfire on him, you know. But speaking of garbage, you know, the, the Bible talks about garbage. St. Paul says, uh, I believe it was in Philippians 3, 8. We did actually did a Bible study, verse by verse Bible study. If you're interested in Philippians, uh, you can go back in my videos. You can find it. I think we broke it down in four or five parts. But St. Paul said, you know, I had it all. You know, he was he was a Pharisee. He was like high class. He was the man. And he said he gave it up all for Jesus. He considers it all garbage, you know. And we're just passing through this world. Yeah, it's a political season. I get passionate about politics. And, you know, I'm going to fight hard for who I think is the right man to lead the country. And I think that's Donald Trump right now. Um, but win or lose, you know. <laughs> They'll not steal my joy. I, I was joyful after every presidential election, whether I was sad that my guy won or lost. I'll go to work the next day. You know, I'm not going to go out and protest and scream like the Democrats are going to do when Trump wins. I'm not going to cry on CNN either if, if my guy loses. Because I have the joy of the Lord. That's something they can never take. They can never take our faith away from us. You know, this world is garbage compared. St. Paul said... No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can conceive what the Lord has prepared for us. You know, he said the, the, the present sufferings of this world aren't even worthy to compare what God has waiting for us. This is scripture truth. This is St. Paul telling us, you know, this world is garbage. Politics is garbage. Your fancy house, your fancy car is garbage. Consider it garbage compared to what Jesus has for us. Let's focus on the Lord. I mean, you know, we got to live in this world, but we're not of this world. We're passing through. And while we're here, we do the best we can. We vote for the best people. But, you know, and you don't let these people change who you are. No matter what Joe Biden says, you're not garbage. Jesus doesn't create garbage. God does not create garbage. Men create garbage, you know. And, um, you know, you may feel like garbage today. You may just feel run down and maybe you had a father like Joe Biden. Hopefully you didn't because we know what his daughter said in, the, in her uh, in her diary that the FBI said, yes, it was her diary and put a girl in jail for stealing it. But Joe Biden's daughter in her diary said she took showers with her daughter, with her father, Joe, and did inappropriate things all the way into her teenage years. Uh, so hopefully your father wasn't like Joe Biden, but even if he was, you know, your heavenly father, the perfect father that makes no mistakes, who's right about everything, says you're worth the blood of God. The Bible says he sent his only begotten son to save you. That if you believe in him, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Because God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. So if you're feeling like garbage today, just know the truth. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The truth is you're worth the blood of God to the one who created you. And the one who created you does not create garbage. Now we all sin and we're not worthy of that love. None of us are worthy of that love. In fact, Isaiah said our righteousness is like filthy rags. So if you think, oh yeah, I know I'm not garbage. I'm a good person. You're probably in more trouble than that poor guy who thinks he's garbage because your righteousness and my righteousness are filthy rags. But it's Christ's righteousness that he freely gives us when we're baptized. And then when we sin, you know, some of you might say, well, I've been baptized for years and I've done a lot of sins. Just go to confession. And again, you'll be clothed in Christ's righteousness. And God will see you and not the garbage that Joe Biden thinks you are, or our righteousness, which is filthy rags. So, vote Tuesday. <laughs> Let's take out the trash, because this has been, you know, I've been a political observer for my whole life, and I'm, I just turned 59 last week, and I got to tell you, there is not a shadow of doubt 
Joe Biden and Kamala Harris administration is the most corrupt administration I've ever seen. Combine that with their incompetency. You know, Obama was pretty corrupt, but at least he was smart and he could kind of hide and fix things up a little bit, you know, here and there. But this four years was a total disaster. And this is why I predict a landslide victory. You know, everybody's saying it's gonna be close, it's gonna be close, you know. Vote like it's going to be close. Make sure you go out there. I don't care. You know, my 90-year-old mom with a walker went out and voted. You could vote no matter what. You got to vote. You got to vote. Even if you got to wait in line 10 hours, you got to vote. This is the most important election of our lifetime. But I, I got to say, between the incompetency of the Harris and Biden administration and their corruption, I mean, they, they, they're warmongers. They've the Biden family enriched themselves with the Ukraine war. The, the, the military industrial complex has been enriched financially. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not saying Russia, we should let Russia take over Ukraine. Of course not, of course not. Putin's an evil KGB agent. He, you know, he wants to you know rule the world with communism. He wants the old Soviet Union back and more. Of course we got to stop him. But this is why we need Trump. Because he invaded Georgia under Bush. He invaded Crimea under Obiden, uh, under B Obama. He didn't invade nothing <laughs> under Trump. He didn't invade nothing. And as soon as Biden came in, he invaded Ukraine. And a million lives have been lost. Think about that. A million. A million lives have been lost. Because Joe Biden profited, profits from war. This is a fact. So it's so important we win this election Tuesday. But what mo what's most important is to know that you are loved by God. The bad news is none of us are worthy of it. The good news is God thinks you're worth the death of his son. So put your trust in him. If sin is blocking you from a relationship to with God, get to confession. If your faith is weak, ask for the grace to have faith and to believe. God bless and stay Catholic.